Welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is going to be my red rum card, my first one. I'll try and see how it comes out. Um, I'm not going to do too much talking in this one because in haunted cards, it's not about, uh, we don't want too much, uh, too much blabbing of the mouth. <laughs> And we want more sound effects here of just stamping. Okay, getting my ledge here. Stamping a little bit more on an angle like this, like it's a, this is craggy rock out here on the uh, edge. do is with this one you offset it a little bit don't just go like this this you know and then you get a lot of that repeating pattern there so offset overlap your previous impressions like so and you get a clean very um unpatterned um continuous rock like that okay just go like that. Overlap left and right and top and bottom. Okay, let's see. This is on the vintage uh, pre-printed paper, by the way. I'm using my Brilliance pad because it's thicker and pigment inks are very surface oriented. Uh, this one happens to be a quick drying, water-based style of pigmenting, so it really works really great for my purposes here. Okay, let's see. Got to get my bearings here. Okay, I'm doing my uh, trying to figure out my composition here. sedge filler. I'm, going, I'm rolling the edge to get a little bit of that excess ink off the edge there. Uh, my pad happens to be really, really wet right now because I just re-inked it, so I like to get a little of that ink off. Just like the, uh, the ledge, I'm overlapping and changing the angle slightly. So I'm getting a little bit of an edge, that's why you kind of roll off the, uh, the ink off the edge, or you can take a paper towel or something like that and just kind of wipe it off. All right, so we get this grassy slope right there. It's, it's a little bit heavy on the edges like that where I've, you know, didn't wipe it off enough, but I don't really worry about that because I'm going to, this is going to be kind of a darker slope anyway. Um, speaking of that, let's go ahead and tone this in right now. That was decent brilliance. I will use this later though. Cotton ball. Okay, I want to get this pretty dark in here. Really that dark, but that dark in an area is okay. Okay, this is going to be a reflection card, so I'm kind of creating a darker base right here where that's going to represent going down into the water like that. Let's do the same thing. Let's model this um, kind of rock outcropping a little bit with some additional tone.
Let's just see this rock seems a little bit more three-dimensional with that shade on it. Same thing with this grassy slope. Okay. Let's see, let's get our moon in there. One inch hole punch. If you can, I mean, this isn't a lot of space to work around, but if you can get this uh, moon a little bit, kind of, a little bit more blotchy and uneven, see it's a little bit less ink at the base of it. I think it looks a little bit better varied. I mean, I didn't vary it very much, but um, kind of a sloppier application, kind of, it contributes to the atmosphere of this piece, I, I, you know, in my opinion. All right, let's get a little bit more, um, imagery into this uh, slope right here. Um, let's put some uh, grasses right coming from behind this ledge here. Um, let's go for the uh, smaller reeds here. We'll use a little bit of the larger and smaller. When you're doing the reeds, hold it at the base here, don't push up here, otherwise the top of the reeds get a little bit um, too thick. What I mean by that is, if you go like that, you see the tops of them get really, you know, um, kind of smashed down like that. Again, I'll put some of these reeds in front of the uh, boulders as well like that. Right over here, just for a little change, I'll go for the larger ones at the top. Like that. And then I'll use the smaller ones. And then I'll Add some over here as well. Or leafless limbs large. a little bit so that the tree looks like it's going into the grasses right down here you don't really want to wipe off all of it but um, kind of wipe off a good amount at the base and then transition it slightly just quarter inch up the uh, trunk or something like that with a little maybe half as much ink or something like that I always think of these two guys digging as like grave diggers. I guess that's what I tend to use them for. Grave robbers, I don't know. I 
But if they're doing it at night, it's a little bit suspicious, wouldn't you say? Have our smaller leafless limbs. Wipe off the base a little bit. And I'll put uh, one or two on the other side of the slope here, like that. like that and let's see with this bat here it's pretty big but the scene is going to you know it's supposed to look kind of gruesome because it's Halloween so you put in these kind of bats in here I mean it's not like a happy bat or anything like that it's a little bit more realistic but it tends to take the edge off a little bit, I think. There's one, and here's this other one by Edward Gorey. Let's see, let's get a little bit more texturing in this uh, grassy area. Some of these rocks. I was going to add some extra tone in here, but maybe with these rocks I don't need to. Maybe it adds enough texture. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a little extra shading in here. See where these rocks are a little bit darker and then it gets light like, like that. I'm just kind of reiterating that with this brown colored pencil. I'm going in very, very softly. You're almost like using it like a Oh, like a piece of uh, um, pastel. Couldn't think of the word there. There's just a real light touch like that, okay? Most people, they're not used to using things so lightly like that. So they want to see kind of a, you know, a result of what they're doing, like instantaneous in its fullest incarnation but if you kind of just work gradually like this you'll you'll have a lot of control over um, varying values with your media so you can use your media from everything from the lightest incarnation of it which it's barely applied um, to the darkest incarnation of it the darkest and brightest usually Especially with dry media, but you can also do it with um, wet media, too. Okay, see so that right there? So that hillside has a little bit more... Um, yeah, kind of mass and structure to it. Go into this uh, slope here. I'll give the... Um, kind of the edge a little bit more of a separation between uh, the land and sky. You can add a little bit more shadow underneath our uh, objects. Here's these people. You can have the shadows kind of coming out from the moon. Like that, maybe I'll strengthen it even more. Let's see. Looking for my black 
colored pencil. Here's your moon. And you'll have the shadows kind of emanating from that moon. Kind of aiming right, this line is kind of going right towards the center of that moon. So you have that shadow kind of, you know, um, emanating from that vanishing point. Okay, this one over here, you see this right here? The shadow right here goes at this angle, okay? Let's start addressing this lower section here. Let's get our bearings a little bit. Okay, so I don't usually add too much up here, but I add it down in this lower section down here. There's our reflective uh, types of elements from this scene. I want to usually put something over here and here, okay? But I don't want to cover up too much of what's going to happen up here, so I need to be very careful about that. Um, this was here. Okay, I can have this down here and see those figures up there. I don't want to cover them up too much. And maybe we can have it go like this instead. All right, I already glued this one down for this mirrored section stays on. Stays on will adhere and dry on this mirrored cardstock. Brilliance will dry on it, but it won't adhere where you need to spray seal it. This uh, spooky branch here, like that. Now, that looks really clean down here, so I want to kind of, for lack of a better kind of uh, term, kind of dirty it up. I, I want to make it uh, look a little bit, I don't know, a little bit more jumbled and unkempt, okay? So we're going to add more of these reeds down there. And it also kind of extend the textural range. Uh, one of the things I didn't say here uh, that I always need to remember to say when stamping on top of this foil cardstock, anything kind of less than, you know, uh, porous or less porous than normal is kind of watch out because it's easy to skew this because the ink isn't absorbing into the paper at all very surface oriented so it's easy to make contact with your stamp and then kind of move it a little bit especially if your pad is like super juicy okay
All right, so a lot more reeds down there like that. So you have it on one side of the pond and on the other side, right? Giving it that nice continuity like that. All right, now see that rocky little textural stamp up there? Let's use that on this lower section here, but let's do it in the stays on ink. So I still like to give my pieces a little bit more of a vignette type of look to it. So I'm going to be using this kind of up in this area and then we'll use it like in the four corners. Yeah, it'll go across the bottom too, but um, it's kind of like creating a little bit of a framing around our piece. Okay, now this one right here, it's really easy to skew, so be careful. Here it goes on the uh, upper right, upper left. One of the things about stampscapes, it's everything has been designed to be overlapped, either a little bit or a lot. Okay. It's all about uh, kind of variation and flow, which doesn't make it harder to use. It makes it easier to use, but you have to kind of get used to it um, in terms of freeing yourself up from, you know, the confines of, uh, I don't know, kind of previous types of, or other types of uh, usages of other stamps. Okay. You just kind of you know, you get used to overlapping things and repeating things. And, you know, even if you get like partial impressions, it's okay. Okay. Now this guy right here, I wanted to put him kind of like in the water. I thought, I thought that would look cool it, unless that's too much. Let's see how it looks here. So if I put this guy like laying down in here, I think that'll look okay. Or I can have him here, here in the foreground. It wouldn't really, kind of be good for um, um, perspective. Okay, <laughs> can't think of the word again. Um, but, I, but I think it'd be kind of cool. I, I When I'm doing these kind of um, Halloween, spooky types of winter things. I, I kind of throw perspective. I don't throw it out the door. We're still working per with perspective on this scene here, but uh, it's a lot less so. Because I think these kinds of uh, fun types of whimsical um, applications of our stamp should be uh, kind of liberating. at least during this time of year. <laughs> okay, so here's our little skeleton down here. Is that like that? I don't know if he's uh, kind of under the water or over it like that. Maybe they're under the water by quite a bit. I don't know. Maybe that's why the, if you want to say it's, too small for the foreground like that, then maybe they're underwater by quite a bit. I don't know. It doesn't look out of place though to me. Okay, let me put a few more of these um, little rocks around our character there. Maybe this little skeleton comes out. He's doing the backstroke, maybe, in the water. usually do like to have my little skeletons and things like that. Uh, you know, I don't know. I guess it's supposed to be a little bit spooky, but for the most part, I <laughs> I tend to see it as more like a, in a nightmare before Christmas. You know, it's like all these little things, creatures coming out. You know what I mean? Once a year during Halloween to, to kind of play and to have some fun. 
Yeah, okay, kind of mucking it up a little bit more down here. get this red rum in here kind of the entire idea of this so it's going to go down to about right here and up here red rum is going to be like painted on these rocks and uh, we can't do it this way so it's going to have to be like up and down like this and i want it to kind of look like it's been written on to these rocks so i'm going to do a little bit of a Oh, let's see. I'm going to do it in this black here. Okay, so I might start up here. I'm trying to figure out how large I can make it. Um, okay, let's see. I need to go down a little bit lower right here, I think. I just need to see if this is going to show up in here. And I think it will. All right. Uh, if you don't know what Red Rum is, um, it's referencing this moment in the movie, The Shining, by Stanley Kubrick, a written, book written by uh, Stephen King. <laughs> and this horrifying kind of moment when this kid writes on the mirror, red rum. So if you don't know what that is, you'll see what this is in a minute. Okay, so this is a three millimeter paint pen. This um, company right here, S-F-A-I-H, This is some of the most opaque um, pens I've used so far. But the problem with that is, which I wondered about with acrylic ink paint, is that will it clog up? And it really does clog. It dries. The top dries off completely. So it, you, you really have to kind of work it a little bit. I mean, it takes like a minute. But you have to work it a little bit and kind of press down and get that uh, paint flowing in there every time you use it. Okay. All right. So anyways, back to this. So I need to make this look a little bit sloppy here and try to make it look like it's kind of written on the rocks. And I'll try to do it kind of in a real scratchy way. Uh, but this paint pen is the one, is my choice for this one because it... Uh, It's nice and opaque and it'll stand out against the uh, the paper. Well, the other types of uh, pens are a little bit more uh, see-through. Okay, there's our red rum 
like that. <laughs> and pair it up. I've got a red rum. And when the little kid who writes that looks in the mirror, it spells murder. <laughs> He writes it in lipstick, it's not in blood, but it's pretty horrific. Because the kid's walking around saying red rum. We're, we're, we're thinking, what the heck is he talking about? All right, let's get a little bit of uh, highlighting, and I don't know, I'll try to make this uh, red rum a little bit more kind of integrated with the rest of the scene. Um... Let's go with this one here. Beige paint pen. A little, a few little highlights in the uh, terrain. All right, now see the backs of these uh, characters right here. I'm going to have them a little bit more illuminated in the moonlight. Like that. And we'll put some kind of highlights on some of these rocks here. All right, do little creatures kind of hang out in the shadows here. Little eyes in the shadows like that kind of, uh, it makes it a little bit less grisly. We want some grizzle, but I don't know. We don't want to freak anyone out. Or do we? I don't know. Maybe we do. Uh, I'm 
going to add a few little more of these uh, reeds in front of some of these eyes, okay? Perhaps. <laughs> Yeah, look at that murder. It doesn't read super clear or anything like that, but uh, enough. And see, I, I was careful not to stamp anything right here over the reflection because it's all about that reflection there. Okay, so just what I've, d I've done back up in here with those eyes, we'll do a couple of them down below. And down in these areas, lower left and right areas. All right, let's uh, grizzle up this uh, this red rum just a touch. Again, I don't want to make it too gruesome, but uh, maybe it's just supposed to be painted on. It's not supposed to be, uh, you know, like blood. <laughs> yeah. I guess it could be. So we'll take some of this, uh, the smaller red pen and I'll kind of yeah, put some around here like it's like it's dripping down on some of these rocks I mean it it doesn't really look like the uh the letter forms are on the rocks too much it's because I had to make it look more kind of readable So I'm just kind of, uh, it's like gravity. Yeah. Like that. Um, and then I'll put some uh, kind of splashes around here. This is like the uh, the blood splattered av evidence, you know, <laughs> kind of have the little dots a little bit farther apart as you move away from the uh, whatever the source. Although, like I said, blood splattered. It's a paint splattered evidence here. Okay. this and there we go like that look at it like this it's kind of interesting how this goes in a slope like that okay making my assessment I don't think I need to color anything else but see this red rum here let's kind of enhance that slightly. Let's go for a little bit of a darker, um, kind of framing off of the other uh, word here. Being careful not to, I don't want to darken in this area because it's already kind of a little bit more obscure anyway, so we don't want to need to decrease the contrast of it. You know, by darkening that area in there. Yeah, I make it a little bit darker around it, but not next to the uh, letter forms.
me see if this... If I put red rum here... I wonder if that'll look okay. I'll figure it out. I think I'm going to take this. And we'll spray... We'll glue it into a place here. All yeah, right, I've decided to go ahead and put this red rum. It seems like it's just the thing to do here. Let's see. That's how they did it in the uh, the movie, or Danny did it. All right, so red rum. And that is the card. There's that parallax right here. With the, uh, the reflections making it look real three-dimensional. There's our little uh, skeleton. Under the water, I guess. And you have all these little things kind of moving against that. And up here, um, I don't know if you can see it, but um, those rocks are kind of in the water. We can come out here farther with some additional rocks. Let me let me do that. It creates that kind of reflection against the things up top, um, contributing to the three-dimensional effects. So you just don't want to do it. Um, you know, put things in down here that are going to cover up um, kind of the main things that are being reflected down there. So there's nothing like in this area. So. Uh, might as well add some of these extras in there. Okay, there we go. That looks a little bit more kind of a, a cluttered uh, body of water, too. Let's see. It needs a little bit more, I think. I, I'm usually not doing, like, half-page um, reflection cards. Well, not too often. A little bit more these days, but... Um, yeah, there's just a lot more uh, potential to fill in here, I'm guessing. So... There we go. That looks a little bit better. You have more things kind of reflecting against those um, objects reflecting down there, which is good. And see this, I didn't put anything over our wording, you know, no, none of these rocks in here to obscure the wording right there, because it's already kind of a little bit obscured anyway, you know, just to begin with. And up top here, you see that kind of splashing kind of red out that way. Maybe I can emphasize that just a touch more. Like that. Put a couple of those little red dots down there in the water, too. I don't know, just for kicks. All right, so that is it. Hope you enjoyed red rum as much as I enjoyed creating it. If you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. Hope you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.